Hey guys, Mohan Pobert here and today I'm going to talk about or answer the question can you buy a business if you live in a different country, third world country or what or where you need to be in order to buy a business in any location that you want. I'm going to talk about location, locations in general. Can you buy a business if you live in a different country and buy a business in, I guess, somewhere else? So yeah, let's, let's get to it. So to begin with, remember, if you didn't yet subscribe, um, let me know in the comments below what you want to hear about this video, this, this channel is all about how we buy businesses, build portfolio and make sure other people run those businesses for us. Me personally, I don't like to manage businesses. I'm, I'm just not good with manager, to be honest. I'm, I'm not good with employees. I think I'd rather have people who are experts in their fields running their day to day. And I'm just setting goals, deciding for them what are the best next steps while they're basically working on the, the menial day-to-day -day stuff that, that's involved in the business. So if you want to learn more about that, yeah, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think and hit the notification button and make sure you're not missing any future videos. So let's talk about today's video. So is it possible to buy deals remotely in a nutshell? Yes. But the question now is how do we do it? What, are, what is the process? What you need to be aware of? What you need to be prepared for? And let's dive into all those questions and, and yeah, let's, let's give you some answers. So just to begin with, I wouldn't go, if, if you're looking to do your first deal, I wouldn't go for deals internationally just because the fact that, especially in the businesses that we're looking to buy and the, I guess all this type of businesses that we're talking about in this channel, people are looking to exit their business and retire many times or just want a, a quick fast, fast exit. I wouldn't go for international deals to begin with just for the fact that uh, I guess a big part of closing a deal is building rapport with the seller. And uh, I mean, it just common sense that it's going to be easier for you to build rapport with someone when you do it one on one. And if you just begin, it's going to be hard for you to do things one on one all the time. If you want to look for, I guess, deal in a different country, if you want, if you're based in the UK, for example, you want to do a deal in Australia, it's going to be harder for you to visit that business owner two, three times one on one. Uh, obviously because you don't want to take flights to Australia all the time. So to begin with, I'd say if you're just starting, do deals locally just because it's easier for you to build rapport with the person. But then let's say you decided you don't want to do that. Whatever the case is, you want to do deals internationally. Let's talk about what are, what are the steps and what you need to be aware of. And I just want to add quickly and say I close deals remotely, but it's after I had deals before that where I just knew the process really smoothly. So it's like I met people in the past, did deals one-on-one. -on -one. I knew the process really, really smoothly. And then to take things, I guess, remotely, it's going to be easier for you when you understand the process. But yeah, to begin with, I'd say do things locally, do things one-on-one. -on -one. And when you have that experience, then go to, to do things remotely. I think it's the, it's the best path for you to, to move forward in, in this space. And it just, it's just going to make things easier for you because if you're going to try to do everything initially remotely, your learning curve is going to be much harder compared to if you try things locally, do a deal. And then if you want to do deals remotely, then go for that after that. I'd say another thing, again, before we're getting to the process of how to do things remotely, as, as you see, and, and, and I guess I understand, I highly suggest you to do things face to face. But if you still want to do things remotely, I'd say the best next thing is to find a man on the ground. So if you have the option, if you want to do things internationally for example then ideally find a local partner to be there on the ground for you and just share equity don't be afraid to to share equity with partners especially if they can add i guess an additional value other than just being someone who is local so yeah don't don't be don't have too much pride of owning 100 of your business i mean in the end of the day and i said it before you rather, I guess everyone would rather have 20% of a big, big business than 100% of nothing. So if you have a local partner who can help you find deals, who can help you build rapport with someone and you bring obviously your value from, from the other side of the world, then that's the best next step. And yeah, if you need people on the ground or just in general, I get many messages from people who want to learn more about the process and how they can work with us. So if you want to watch our back and see how we do deals or even people ask me if they can invest passively into our deals, then just see the description below and get in touch. We also have lots of partners around the world, so we can many times bring that local partner to your deals. So definitely, if you want to get into the space of buying businesses in general, um, definitely see the description below and, and get in touch. 
So let's start with the process. Let's say we decide to do it all remotely. We decide to do it all, I guess, if you want to do the deals internationally, obviously you don't want to take a flight every week or two to meet that seller. And uh, like I said, you want to work on a few deals at the same time. So if you need to work on a few deals at the same time, they're all international. You want to find ways to do things remotely where you don't have to go to that country every time in order to move forward with your deal. So let's start with the process, how, how that even works. So to begin with, I guess, let's start with initially, how do we even find deals remotely or internationally? And I think if you watch my other videos on how to prospect and find deals and build yourself deal flow, I think that's the easier part because to do, to bring yourself deal flow, a better deal flow, you can do it all online nowadays, especially with social media and even letters. You can even send letters all from the internet. You can find websites where you just write a letter and they'll send it physically to the address that you want. There are services like mailletter.com or just Google any, I guess, services that can do it for you. And that's awesome. You can do it all online pretty much. And same goes with social media. Like literally, if you'll just master those two ways of building yourself deal flow, you'll be good. I mean, get letters and get yourself really good with social media. That alone can be all remotely and can bring you amazing deal flow. Now, let's say we move forward, obviously, we started to originate some deals. What's next? How do we do calls and meetings with business owners? So what me and my business we're using pretty much every day, many, many times is either Skype or Zoom. Zoom dot, uh, I think it's dot US maybe. Uh, but yeah, just, just Google Zoom conference calls or use Skype. So obviously, when you do calls online, Ideally, to build more rapport with business owners, do it with video, so something like this. So just use Skype with a camera or just use Zoom with a camera. It's just going to build much more rapport if you're going to see the person um, and going to see his face. Even if you're in a different country, it's going to build a lot more rapport versus just being on the phone with no face. So if you're going to decide to do it all remotely, obviously you need to do calls with those business owners. So yeah, make sure you have a camera if possible, even if you can, can't see him, make sure that he can see you. That alone will build more rapport and will help you progress those deals. So what's the next steps? Let's say you built some rapport, you signed an NDA. What's the next steps? How do you get financials? Obviously you can do all that online. You don't need to be there in person. There are businesses where they literally don't have things online yet. I saw that. So what they did for us, they literally had to scan balance sheet and PLs and all that, which is all good. Just ask them to, to scan it and send it to you. But other than that, most of the businesses you're going to talk to, they are able to send you everything online. Just uh, they'll send you PDF files and all that. So you're good with that. Now, let's say we move forward. We got financials. How do we do all that remotely? Obviously, when you have financials, you don't need to see the business owner um, at that stage. Like even our CFO is working in Canada. We're all in different countries. Uh, Carl, my other partner, is in the UK. Uh, John, our CFO, is in Canada. I'm based in Tel Aviv in Israel. So, and we're doing it all remotely. So we're pretty much creating, looking at the numbers, creating offers, even sending the offers remotely. So we're creating just like a PDF file or a doc file uh, where we send it in, in the email. So that, that all can be remotely and, and it's great. I'd say when you send the offer, ideally even there, you, you want to have more physical one-on-one -on -one interaction. So it just, like I said, just common sense. When you meet someone in person, you can build so much more rapport. So if you have the option, obviously be there. But if you, again, look for deals internationally, then yeah, just send the offer on email. What we like to do is to send the offers on Friday. So that's where the owner can go back, have the weekend off, relax, and just think about that deal. And then Monday comes and he thinks about going to his uh, business again. And he's just, you don't want to do it. Like Mondays for some of those business owners is just a nightmare. And it literally before Monday is like, okay, fuck it, I'm done with this business. Let's sell it to those guys who just made me the offer on Friday. So that's why that's just a cool psychology, uh, I guess, tip that, that Carl, my, my partner, like to do. And that's what we do. We usually like to send our offers on Friday. That's where the owner just think about it a lot. And this, I guess, all, all this game of doing deals is a lot of it is psychology. It's just your mindset and building rapport and making getting to a point where the owner just sick of that business so much that it's just like, okay, I'll hand it over to that guy who's a great guy who I believe can take care of my employees, my brand, and yeah, it, it works. 
And then obviously after we send the offer, we either get a yes or no. And if needed, we then have more Zoom calls, build more rapport, ask more questions, get into a point where we get into agreement. Obviously you can do all that on Zoom calls or Skype calls. I'd say after you did your first few calls with the owner and you had a face-to-face -face at least calls, then if you have phone calls with no camera, I guess that's okay because you already know each other, you already get get the sense and the vibe of the, the other person. I'd say initially it's really important for you to see the face and for them to see your face, just to build more rapport. Now let's say we move forward, we signed an LOI and we want to start our due diligence. I mean, even for that, you, have, you can be all remotely pretty much. So your accountants and lawyers can do the work for you. You don't have to be there doing the due diligence yourself. Like your end of the due diligence can be done remotely. I'd say when you move forward to close the deal, especially if it's a physical business, you want to be there, meet the employees, obviously, see the facilities and all that, but you don't have to. Um, it's up to you. I'd say, obviously, if you buy a business, a multi-million dollar business, you want to be there eventually and see the employees and all that. Uh, but literally, until you close the deal, you don't have to be there at all. Now, the, the, I guess the only exception is if it's an online business, and those are deals that I've done in the past, you don't have to be there or anywhere because when it's an online business, you can run it from anywhere in the world. Many times, even the employees are working from different places in the world. So if you're buying an online business, it's all good. You don't need to be anywhere. That's why online businesses are, are cool. You can literally buy businesses who are registered all over the world and you can do it from wherever you are. So yeah, I guess, like I said, if it's a physical business, there's like an engineering business or a manufacturing business or anything like that, you want to be there, you want to meet the person who's going to run the business for you, obviously the general manager, build some rapport with him, have plans to run the business. But then after that initial meeting, after you buy the business and you meet your manager and all that, you can do then just monthly calls with that manager, set goals and just set the expectation for the next month. And you don't need to be there physically. It's up to you if you want to visit that business physically or not. Um, obviously it's cool to do that. The business can pay your expenses and flights and all that. So it's all good. Um, and then that's pretty much summarized the question if you can do deals remotely, internationally, or if you have to live in a specific place in order to buy a business somewhere else. I hope that answered that question. And yeah, remember, if you like this content, subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think, like the video, share with your friends. And I'm gonna post some more cool videos on, on buying businesses, on growing businesses, and I, I hope you got some value from it. Let me know what you think. I'll see you soon.